Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. I'm Paul with Stud Pack. In our last video on this series, we had a lot of new people watch our video in this series. So if you're one of those people, welcome back. And we sure appreciate all the support. We're gonna jump right into today's project. But in, in the last video in this series, we poured this underlayment in this bathroom. It's completely dry and it came out beautifully. Check this out. Now remember that our goal was flat. Our original goal was to be level, but we couldn't do that. And so now our goal is flat. And you can see we're pretty close to level. I mean, it, it looks good, but that's probably a quarter inch out of level over four feet. So the width of the bathroom, probably three quarters inch, which is what those screws were showing us. Remember, we removed all those screws and we poured this so that it's flat. And in this direction, we're, we're really good. Super happy with that. I got in here earlier. I removed the foam dams at each doorway. We're going to give you a close up of that one here in a minute. And then I also used my buzz saw. And I just went around the edges and I cut off the foam here. We had several comments about whether or not I'm going to leave this. So right here, I'm going to remove it and fill that with thin set. A lot of people recommended that to us. But over here in the toilet area, we're going to have baseboard and shoe and it will cover it. So I'll probably just leave it here. So let's go over here and check out this lip where the dam was by the master closet door. So see, it's probably, what, a quarter inch thick here? But then look how thick it is here. Probably five eighths because we had a real low spot. So the plan is... Is our floor tile. So we're going to ramp from the top of this wood to the top of our tile over our underlayment. And you can see how little that bubble is off. Not a big ramp. So you'll never, I don't think you'll ever feel that walking in here. So that was a good solution to that problem. But today's project, we need to do a little bit of electrical because we got to get this drywall up. We need to get all the taping done so we can start painting in here. So earlier, I had all this taken apart. I turned off circuit number 20, but then I got shocked by the neutral. So a lot of people think you cannot get shocked by a neutral, but actually the second worst shock I've ever received was from a neutral. What was the first shock? What was the, what was the worst one? So the worst shock I ever got, I felt it for two days. I got shocked doing plumbing work. I was actually hooking up the ice maker on the refrigerator and that whole incident really changed the way I do a lot of things. It changed the way I work with electricity. It changed the tools that I buy. And I'm thinking about doing a whole video just on that because of how valuable it was. So if you would like to see a recreation of that up until the point where I get shocked, let us know in the comments and we'll do that for you. It, it was a very interesting problem. We still talk about it with my wife and it's a super important subject. I really want to explain it to you very well. So let's head out to the panel and get started on this electrical problem. All right, guys, before we take this panel off, I really want to stress to you the dangers of electricity. It's mysterious. You can't see it. If you do see it, it's pretty bad already, right? I have the utmost respect for electricians. I got to work with some great master electricians. If any of my kids wanted to know one trade they should go into, I'd say be an electrician. So this is not weekend DIY stuff. If you're not comfortable with it at all, if you have any doubts, please hire a certified electrician. They spend years training and working in the field, it's well worth the phone call. So let's take this cover off. All right, guys, we're out here at the panel, and this is really a sub panel. You can see that there's no means of main disconnect. The main panel's on the other side of the house. Current code would require a breaker here to shut off this whole thing, but it's on the other side of the house. You'll notice that I came in here and numbered it. The factory numbers are hard to read, so I numbered it with a Sharpie, and panels are numbered in a specific way. Odds are on one side, evens are always on the other. You would never go one, two, three, four, five, and then pick up on the other side. This panel has 20 spots, and there you go. The last one is 20. These right here are called tandems. They're called twins. There's several names for them, depending on where you live in the United States. So this space has, a, has two breakers, so it's 11A and 11B. It's not 11 and 13 and 15 and 17. It's just like I have it labeled right there. Sometimes you'll find a panel upside down 
That's not wrong. It's just the way that that electrician had to install the panel, usually to meet code. So here's our panel. Let's take the cover off. Now, we used to remove panels the size of this door. So we would always have one guy holding the panel in, someone else removing the screws just so the panel didn't, didn't fall. Not so much of a concern anymore. I should have worn my new magnetic wristband. Most panel covers have a little ledge on them, but you don't want the weight of the panel on these breakers. Yeah, this one does not have a ledge. So a good thing to support it. In the United States, we have 240 volts across phases, 120 volts from phase to our neutral and from phase to ground. The black and the red is incoming power to this panel, 244 volts. The white is our neutral, 122. And on our ground bus over here, 122. So let's use these three cables coming into this connector right here as our example. This one right here is on circuit 16A. Remember, 20, 18, 16A. So the current that is traveling on this one returns to the panel on this neutral that's in the same cable. Now I know it's alternating current. It goes back and forth. So for purposes of this, we're going to say it's traveling on this black to the load. It's returning to the panel on this neutral. So what happened to me? I turned off the circuit for this wire. It was returning on another neutral. And that's how it shocked me. So we're going to turn circuit 20 off and then go inside and check out what's going on in that electrical box. I removed the wire nut. Remember, this circuit is off now. Circuit 20 feeding this box is off at the panel. Now watch what happens to the closet light when I remove this neutral. See that? Hmm. Lights on. Right. Lights off. Let me get my tester and check this out. I've got 120 volts across neutrals. So if anybody ever tells you that neutrals are safe to work with, find another electrician. Now, if you thought that was interesting, check this out. 120 volts from that neutral to ground. These pipes are bonded to the ground in the panel, probably at the main service. So we're completing a circuit right there. And if you thought that was interesting, watch this. Do not try this at home. Now that closet light is on. Hmm. Now watch. Off. On. Why does that work? Because the electrons are coming from that light fixture into this neutral and they're looking for a way back to the panel or to ground. They don't care where it is. It can be through this pipe or it can be through you. But it should be through a neutral. So that's why we're here. We're going to fix that problem. So let me put a cap on that to make it safe, and then we're gonna untwist all the blacks, and I'm gonna show you what's going on there. All right, again, we turned off circuit number 20, which is feeding this box. And we showed you that the neutral still has current on it, but check this out. I've got 113 volts on this black wire. How can that be? Everything's off, right? Yep. Now circuit number 20, for these LED lights is off, but I can make them come on. Look at that. This is the kind of stuff you come across in remodels where you really got to know what you're doing. That's why we stressed hiring an electrician. So let's show you what's going on here. This is a very simplified version of what's happening in this box. Circuit 20, which we've turned off, powers the bathroom lights. Here's the white neutral going back to the panel. We've got a complete circuit. Circuit 19, which is feeding the master closet light, is right here, and there's your complete circuit. Here is where this circuit 19 and this circuit 20 are sharing the same neutral, and them sharing this neutral is not okay. Does it work that they share the neutral? Sure it does, but so does touching this black wire to that pipe. The lights come on. The electrons are just looking for a way back to the panel. They're gonna find a way. Nature always finds a way. Name that movie. So let's show you what's happening. We disconnected this neutral right here, right? That's gone. 
So now the electrons cannot return to the panel. So remember, circuit number 20 is off, but we've got current flow here, and then it stopped because obviously we took the wires apart. That's why we had 120 volts on our neutral, and that's why when we touched a wire from this neutral to that pipe, this light came on because we completed the circuit. So why do we have current on this black wire? Well, it's back feeding. It can't go this way. So now it's going this way. It's back feeding through those lights. Those electrons are looking for a way back to complete the circuit. So some of you may be wondering, well, whatever happened to the neutral for circuit 19? Why did they have to share it with the neutral from circuit 20? Well, I found it. So let me go show you where it is. So this is the three-way switch to the entrance to the master closet. So check it out. What do you see in there? I see a little naked copper. Yep, there's our neutral. Hmm. That's the one we've been looking for, and that's the one that should have been tied in to the closet light in that other box. So we're actually going to run a cable and use that and wire it like it was supposed to be done. So where are all our neutrals tied together? It's right here. So if I take that off and remove that, that's going to solve all our problems in that other box. Let's go check it out. Remember, we had 120 volts between this neutral and ground, and it's gone. And then we also had current on this one, and it's gone because it's no longer back feeding. Let's go back over here. Those are our two travelers. There's our neutral from the light. It needs a home. Its home is that loose wire in that box, and we're gonna connect them together right now. above the other three-way switch and replace this with a piece of 14-3. All right, we have all our drywall cut and all our staples removed. There was only, what, Jordan, five staples? Yeah, not too many. Five. So we're using the old cable to pull the new cable. I just left one conductor on each, just like that. Then I was just taught to start wrapping with the lead wire, the one that goes first, and work your way downstream. So that's ready to pull in the attic. And I think that's where I'm headed. <laughs> we haven't been in an attic in a long time. I know, I kind of miss it. Pulling? Yeah. Crazy. I got it. Nice, dude. That was it? That was easy. All right. Now we just hook it up and patch the drywall. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. We installed our three-way switches. We separated the neutrals. Everything's working perfectly. It wasn't that big of a job. You saw how quickly we ran the cable. And patching the drywall is going to take some time, but we're doing that anyway. And the diagnosis took some time. But the main reason we did that was because we're going to be adding an exhaust fan over here and putting more load on that neutral. So we really wanted to get that problem solved. So that's done. We'd actually like to show you more electrical videos, but I've kind of been hesitant to do that for a number of reasons. If you'd like to see us do more electrical, kind of go into a deep dive, let us know in the comments below. We're trying to build a workspace so we can take you there and show you how it works behind the scenes. Right here, everything's behind the walls and behind the sheetrock. So we'd love to show you more detail on a workbench of how all this works. And that's our goal. So now that we have this electrical problem solved, we can patch all these holes, put up that piece of drywall, skim coat all this, and then we're ready for paint and tile, what everybody has been waiting for, especially the owners. So if you like the video, be sure to smash that like button for us. Drop a comment down below, ask a question, leave a tip. We appreciate all the support. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one.